Um, hey there, I thought I would make a video of uh, the Tissot Solar Touch uh, Expert, um, one of the features in it, the service mode, which reveals some cool little things that it measures, including the temperature feature, which is otherwise missing from this watch, at least not easily accessible. So anyway, here's how you get to the service mode. You uh, first activate the crystal, put it in option mode, and okay, put it into sleep. Wait for it to go to sleep. Okay. Right, there's a little dust on that thing, or smear on there. I want to clean that out. Um, okay, and then when it's in sleep mode, you'll want to uh, press the top button here for about three or four seconds. One, two, three, four. And then as soon as you release it, press compass. And then now uh, it will show you a number of different readings um, some of I don't some of which I have no idea what they're what they're uh, indicating like the first screen I don't know what that means a series of numbers maybe some firmware mode or I, I don't know anyway uh, cycle through okay this other screen 2.6 volts I don't know what that indicates maybe the uh, maximum charge of the battery that's a guess if anyone knows please let me know what, what these various features are, but okay. Next, um, again, I don't know what 2.54 volts is measuring. Maybe the uh, current um, current uh, voltage of the battery. That's a guess. And then 69 I and H. I don't know what that means. 8 RT. I don't know what that means. Connections okay. I think that just indicates all the different. Uh, sensors on here are working okay, like the compass and the um, barometer. And then here's a little uh, interesting like light meter type of thing. Um, I don't know how accurate it is, but based on uh, you know how much light is hitting the solar panel. So right now I'm in a kind of dimly, dimly lit room. It's only 130 lux according to this. And you know, if you cover it up, you can see you get you know, much less, seven lux. Then if I shine a light on it, you can get some more. So it's probably just a rough meter. I don't think it's anything accurate about it, but it's kind of neat. And I think if you go out in the sunny you know, outdoors, it reads like 1,000 or 1,200. I think that's where it maxes out, though. Um, okay, and you cycle it again. This gives you the voltage that's being generated by the solar panel. So if you shine a light on it, you can see it goes up. Again, in, in sunny, uh, in the sunny outdoors, it goes to like 1.6 volts when I checked it out there. Okay, and then this dimly lit room, it's very little. Calibrate, question mark. I ignore that. I think that's for the compass. I want to leave that undisturbed. Then this just gives you the reading of the the compass. And then here's our thermometer. Uh, in, in this case, it's in Fahrenheit because I have it, the unit set to feet, but if I had it in meters, it would read in uh, centigrade. And it upgrades, it updates, um, I think, every few seconds in, uh, down to 0.1 degree increments. It's not really changing right now, but uh, let's see if I put my hand, my fingers behind it, it might take a while to heat up, but it does uh, update pretty regularly, actually. Unfortunately, this is a, the uh, quickest, or the only way to access it that I'm aware. So there you can see as I put my hand underneath it, it's starting to update. Uh, okay, I thought it was in 0.1 degree increments. I, I did see it do that before, but uh, there we go. Okay. So anyway, there's that. And then it gives you the raw reading for the barometric pressure. And it goes down to the fourth decimal place. Although, uh, in the watch itself, when you're in the regular mode, you can only see down to uh, three units. But uh, I, I think for altimeter, this is important. So you can see like down to the you know few feet resolution. So that's kind of neat. Um, 
Okay, that just shows you the test of all the LCD segments. Uh, look to be all working. Um, oh, this is kind of neat. This is a test of the beep. The I got some like piezoelectric speaker, so you can check uh, based on where you touch the screen the different frequencies. So I think that's the lowest it goes. Oh no, it goes. Okay, so it goes. Oh, all right. So it's low. Okay, so there you go. If you hit the center, it'll stop the beeping. But that's kind of neat. Um, I think the watch only actually uses a few of those frequencies and in, in its functioning, but it's capable of more. And now this will test uh, touch segments, the difference. You know, as you hit each one, it'll give you a different number for whatever segment you're hitting. So like the center is three, chrono is one, so. I uh, hit this again, and then it gives you some other numbers. I don't know what this is, 320TS. And this tests the speed of the, uh, or this tests the movement of the hand. So forward, hour. Um, hit it again. It does slopes. I missed one. One was slow backward, slow forward. This is backwards for the hour. And I'll do that again if you just let it sit for a couple seconds. And then the next one, oops, is the minute hand forward. You can see how fast that goes. Hit it again, it does a slow forward. And you hit this again, it will go backwards for the minute hand. And then it takes you back to the beginning. Okay, so anyway. Those are some kind of neat features of the service menu, and when you want to get out of it, you just hit the uh, yeah, hit the middle screen, hit the middle button again. Um, I think when you do that, though, it does uh, throw off your altimeter, I believe. Yeah, it kind of goes back to default, so you have to reset the um, your altimeter, and then your uh, relative barometric pressure will read accurately again. So anyway, that's it. I didn't want to go into a whole review of the watch. It's a great watch. I really like it, but uh, the service mode features are kind of neat. Okay, well, thanks for looking.